There's Tony. Tony, how are you? Man, I love that Good. office. How you doing, Alex? He's got he's got the coolest office. Talk about motorsports, man. Look at all those memorabilia. Here's Andre. Hey, bud. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining afternoon. Guys. So Andre's been on before. He kind of knows how I do this. And we've talked a lot about networking. He was a contributor to my book. And I thank you once again for that. Tony, it's his first time on, on a, one of our calls or seminars, seminars or summits. But uh, they take two different approaches. So I put Toyota and Stanley Black & Decker together for a reason. Toyota has a lot of different cars, clearly. Uh, Stanley Black & Decker has a lot of different brands. I'll let Tony get into them. But they use two different approaches. You know, although Toyota uses metrics and KPIs and looks at numbers, Andre uses a more intangible approach, kind of the way I do it as well, because we're old school motorsports. Tony has a very metric approach. So let's get into our first in-depth topic, and that is justifying sponsorships. Tony, I'll start with you. Yeah, well, I think how many brands do you represent um, in sponsorships? And for the most part, it's, I'm pretty sure they're mostly motorsports, but let's talk about all the brands that you talk about in sponsorships and then what the, the differences are between them. Why one, one Mac tools might want something different from Stanley versus Black & Decker. Yeah, Stanley Black & Decker. Can you hear me okay, Alex? Yes. Oh, perfect. So, you know, first of all, thanks for inviting me today. And I always love talking about our brands. I'm very passionate about our brands and, and what we do out there. You know, I've been, in, um, been at Stanley Black & Decker for 37 years now. I've been in sponsorships for about 27 years. So um, multiple brands, uh, brands like Mac Tools, Craftsman, DeWalt, Stanley, Black & Decker, you know, basically all those tool brands that's out there is, is, is the brands that I represent in, in sponsorships. Um, and each one of those brands um, require different KPIs or targeting different uh, customers and, and demographics. Uh, so we've got to find a fit for all of those different brands. But, uh, you know, you was talking about your book, uh, you know, the motorsports <laughs> book. Um, I was lucky enough to, 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 to you know, have some quotes in that book. And I, I guess the first thing that I would say, you know, I think the book, was 19 or uh, 2016 so it's about seven years old yeah and have changed right and, and and there's been a ton of change I, I i look at uh constant um uh evolving and that's how how sponsorships are they're constantly evolving you know uh you always got to get that next iphone that's out there uh you got to have the best technology and i think as companies have leadership changes your focus kind of changes also around your sponsorships and what kpis that you're wanting to deliver to deliver and so that's what's been so important to me is is communication creating dashboards uh weekly reports making sure everybody knows what's going on that weekend how many customers we're hosting how many events we're having it's all about communication and and keeping everybody educated out there within our organization put it that way and how many people within your organization I, I i heard you say the different brands is it one person per brand or when when you're trying to consolidate all this information does it go to one person or many people yeah it goes to many people you know uh, across globally uh we do a, a weekly report let me share screen real quick i'm just going to show this one slide and that's it um but you know, it's a, a report that we put out on a, weekly, okay, you got it. on a weekly basis. And, and, and this report shows how many activations we have this week, how many customers we hosted. It shows where we are, what's going on, you know, whether it's drag racing, baseball. And then it just does a lot of social uh, snapshots. Um, and this is something that we send out to about 200 uh, different marketing leaders across the globe. And so uh, I also include a lot of, of finance people. Finance is good to keep educated because they see the money going out, but lots of times they don't see it being in action. And so uh, I remember I had one of the um, uh, associate uh, CEO, uh, uh, CFOs say, Tony, I had no idea. I always saw the money going out, but I never saw it being activated. So it's just educating people, making sure that they understand uh, sponsorship is great, but you got to make sure that people understand it and see the value in, in, in what you're doing. 
So question then is if I'm an athlete and I need, I want a renewal, let's say, because Mac tool sponsored me, I want to get a renewal. Clearly that goes through several channels and several different people at the company. I need to provide you with content and some type of data that you can then package and show others within the company to sell it through because there are more than one, just more than just one decision maker. And every decision maker is not watching every race or event that an athlete's competing in. So they need to be informed. How can athletes provide you with that data or do you go out and do you collect it on your own? Yeah, actually we get a lot of data from companies like Gum Gum that are tracking social, uh, social media out there okay. and impressions and things like that. We have uh, agencies that track all of that social media to make sure that um, nothing's being said bad about the brand and, uh, and that athlete is, is representing your brand the way they should. Um, you know, it's, it's crazy, but you've got to manage your brand. And I know I think that uh, Andre is going to talk about that a little bit, but everybody's watching and listening to everything that you say. And so that's a big por portion of that. And so, you know, what we really look at is, um, you know, 20 years ago, it was all about visibility, 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 visibility. Right. Now it's more less about awareness, but hey, how do we consider these, these end users to, to consider buying our brand? And how do we, you know, get them to purchase our brand? So it's moving away from awareness to consideration to actually purchasing. And so, and that's tough. You know, I get proposals every day from people that are passionate about what they do, whether it's uh, speedboat racing, whether it's, um, you know, dirt racing, you know, local racing, grassroots racing, and, you know, would love to sponsor every one of them, but they really got to be able to have a global presence have a active uh, being able to you know do customer uh, engagement around it. Our customers are going to want to go to uh, to that event, um, and then we got to really be able to show revenue around that partnership. So, how are we going to sell more product by partnering with you? And that's hard exactly. to do. Uh, that's really really hard to do, Alex. Exactly. How do you sell more product? It all comes down to sales. How do you generate revenue, drive sales, create brand equity for the the brand? And we're going to go more in depth on that because I know you have a lot of different metrics. And I think when I interviewed you for the book, we were at NHRA in Pomona, in the back of might have been Kalita's van or, or rig. And uh, at the time, you were talking about different pillars. Now there's more pillars. We'll go into depth on that as well. But let's head over to um, Andre real quick. Andre, Toyota takes uh, obviously a logical and a very defined approach. It's the largest car company in the world. You guys are doing something right. You've been right. in sports for a long time. You and I go way back to the core yep. days. So we've yep. seen the evolution, but a lot of it is also intangible. It's not numbers that you are not, not metrics that you can put a number onto, but it's more right. of relationships and long-term explain what Toyota looks for when it, when it sponsors, you know, and well, first of all, again, uh, like, like Tony, I'm very appreciative uh, of you having me on Alex and, and, you know, being in your book and, and, and all that, man, uh, just, I, I love this. I really do. And I admire you for doing it. I really Thanks, do. Man. And Thanks. then, uh, Tony, Tony, he's, he's the man, you know, we've had a long intimate relationship with he and his companies and his brand. So that that I'm saying that to segue into what you just asked me. We we have to look at a lot. And I looked at the the uh the guests you had on previously. A lot of what they said still holds true for Toyota, even though we are the, the largest automotive manufacturer in the world. Yes, we sell a lot of cars. Yes, we're we're on top, but how do you we always have to look at ways to sustain that. And one of those venues is motorsports. And with that, we want to look for who would be our best ambassadors. And I know Tony shares this. It's the same thing. Who's going to be partners? We, we don't look to, for people to sponsor. We look for partners. You know, Toyota doesn't do anything intentionally for short term. You know, even when we're, uh, we get proposals in for uh, potential dealerships, we want long-term partnerships. We don't want somebody that's like a collector and all that kind of stuff. Same here. So we look at the person. We look at their potential. We look at the sponsors they already have. Do we have a relationship with them? And then, you know, we we you know, there's all kinds of things we can we can go into here. Maybe we will, Alex. But 
it comes down to how do we relate? How does that potential person, driver, he, she uh, present themselves to us? Is it a handout or are they saying, hey, Toyota, I can help you with this. I can help you sell more of those Camrys or you guys are big on electric vehicles and hybrids now. I got an idea. Yeah, we're going to pay attention to that. No question about it. So when you say intangibles, it, yeah, there's definitely some feel good, but we're looking at your approach too. Nice. Well, the approach works because, you know, there's this race in Long Beach that <laughs> Toyota was involved with for 44 something years, I think. Uh, yeah, that that was, uh, man, that was my baby for, for many years. Uh, we were the only automotive sponsor uh, for that since uh, the mid 70s. And that was our that was our piece of cream, man. Uh, we we hated to to leave that. That was a bittersweet time. Uh, in, in 18 when we when we uh, were moving to Texas and and had to give that up in Acura it looks like they've done a great job in, in taking that over but that was a family that that was yes. a a very intimate long-term family relationship and we treasure it always we yeah we did we were we successful absolutely did we sell cars from it absolutely you know but it was it was a true, true relationship, long time, kind of like Bernstein and Budweiser, you know, the whole, it was just a long, long-term right. family. And you had JGR for 20 years or something, is that right? Yeah, yeah. coming up on it, uh, let's see, we're, I think, at about 18 years with, with them, wow. but no, God was going to bring them up. Um, that started with a, a conversation with with our old vice president, Ed Laukas. I actually, he gives me crap about that because he was in the middle of negotiation with Joe Gibbs one day in his office. I walk in just, you know, not knowing this, you know, mad, messing with him, joking with him. Great. He puts he puts Joe on hold and says, I'm on the phone with coach right now. You want to give me crap right now? Really? And and it just Great. it just went from there, man. And Tony knows that very well. He knows what I'm talking about. So it it is, but again, family. You know, and you know Coach Gibbs, you know, he's a very spiritual man, very family oriented man. So that has been probably, like you brought up Grand Prix, one of our most intimate relationships mm -hmm. has been with JGR for going on 20 years now. Excellent. And then did uh, Toyota and Stanley ever cross over? Were you sponsoring at the same time? Tony? Oh, yeah, all the time. I mean, and Tony can chime in on this. I mean, just the Mac Tools piece. So you guys work together. You many, do cross promotions? Yeah. You do cross it, promotions together, Andre and Tony? Oh, yeah. Yeah, our dealerships, you know, they they have the, 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 the Mac Tools uh, boxes. I mean, it's been corporate as well as on the track. You know, many, many crossover with the wall. You've seen it on the track with our, with JGR's cars and that. That's been as long as our JGR relationship, right, Tony? Um, going on, going on 20 years. I'm going to interrupt least. real quick because you said it so fast. I don't know if everybody on the call heard. You said your dealerships use Mac yes. tools, the toolbox. So obviously Toyota dealers have a service mm -hmm. department. And in the mm -hmm. service department, they fix cars. When they're fixing the cars, they need yeah. tools and they need tool chests. Yeah. So you I, got those from Mac Tools through a relationship that you had, a mutual relationship that you had with the brand ambassador, Joe Gibbs Racing. Um, it, well, it started before that. It started, and, and again, Tony could probably speak to it better than I can. But that actually started before the motorsports piece. Um, uh, and, I, and I hope I'm not, Tony, I hope I'm not misspeaking. But, <laughs> but well, it's been, I know there's integration. There's yeah, an there's that talks about that relationship. And then I know, Tony, you once said also Clitter with the airlines, you know, that how yeah. it all makes sense. Let's go into depth on that for a second, because it talks about brands working with other brands to yeah. support and sponsor an individual or a team. Tony, what yeah, are some other examples the, that you have? In that, that's one of the important KPIs that's out there. You know, when we talk revenue, B2B is, 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 is a big part of, of that. So whether, you know, we're selling tools into dealerships or whether we're selling our uh, Stanley engineer fastening into Toyota to help them build their cars, which I think, I, I don't want to say the percentage, but a large percentage of their cars are built with our Stanley engineer fasteners. Um, and, and, you know, we play in a lot of the same, you know, Coletta Motorsports partners with Toyota and, and, and Stanley Black and Decker for over 25 years now. Uh, Joe Gibbs Racing. Um, you know, our Mac tool brand was the first brand that was in there when coach opened the doors. So I think they've been in business 30 years and they've been using Mac tools for 30 years. So 90% of teams now use either DeWalt. Well, I can't DeWalt say that legally, Mac, right? I, I can't <laughs> say that legally. 
But um, there is a lot of to, uh, company, I, I guarantee, you know, there's really no other company that's integrated into motorsports like Stanley Black and Decker. If you go down in the pits, they're using DeWalt, they're using Mac tools. Uh, you go into the haulers, they're, they're using Vidmar and list the cabinets. So, you know, not only are we integrated into the sport, but everybody watching, uh, a lot of those are mechanics, a lot of those are plumbers, a lot of those are electricians. Uh, uh, you know, everybody in the grandstand could be one of our customers, and, and that's why we're there. It's, and, and, you know, Alex, you talk about the integration further, you know, our big portal at the Daytona 500 Speedway yeah. uh, on our Toyota display is permanent there. Um, and if you go into our display, you will see a lot of Mac Tools representation. <laughs> you will see a lot of the, the the partnership representation in those types of displays. But that's what we do. It's a partnership. It's a relationship. So you go into a, a, a melting pot, so to speak, like Joe Gibbs Racing. Yeah, we absolutely look at that and look at the drivers and look at who is partnering with who. So that's 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 very very important. You also told me once that 90% of what you do is about people. It's uh, partnerships are important with other businesses, but your relationships with your athletes and your drivers, it's, it's more than just them promoting Toyota. It's kind of goes back to what Walter and wing and Phil were saying about, you know, being part of the brands. They, they actually have you, to you know, go ahead. They have to, they have to represent the brand as brand ambassadors. Yeah. So you, you, you look at you. Time. Yeah. We have to look at that. And, and, and I heard earlier too, some, some, some uh, athletes are better at that than others. Now you get, you know, I'm gonna bring up next. You get an anomaly like an Antron Brown. Antron is like something I've never seen before, you know. And he puts us first as much as he can. And he's got some big names on his car already. But that guy, it, and he just never misses a beat when we ask him for something in the past or whatever it is. He doesn't say no. That's that's like up here. But we want to know what your commitment is, you know, to that. And because all of us and all of our business, 90% of when anything we do is about people first. You got the numbers and you got the dot the I's and cross the T's, but it comes down to people. And with us on our, on, uh, with Toyota, a lot of our executive leadership is very involved with motorsports. They attend races, they attend our, our signings. They're, they're very intimate with the drivers. Our, our leader who just retired, Bob Carter, he knew all of our drivers. He wanted to go around and know them on a first name basis. Nice. You know, so we have to make sure that we set that up for that. They're not going to just sit in an office, you know, and just wonder what's going on. You know, they 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 want to be intimate. So we have to make sure we keep that out. And then what metrics are they looking for to decide whether the sponsorship is successful so that your athletes know that they're doing a good job? How does an athlete know that he or she's performing for Toyota? He, you know, and, and it's 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 going to sound familiar from what uh, your your previous guests. We have departments and teams and uh, partners that track social media. You know their their popularity that track all of that stuff. And uh, Tony even showed a report earlier that we get from some of our partners like him that give us you know an idea of what you know what's going in going out type of thing. We get that from them. Not everyone, but we have ways and resources that track that for us. So we do look at it. We, we share it with our team, with our athletes, you know, uh, with, you know, a group based on whoever their decision makers are. Yeah. And, and it, it's, it becomes a point of discussion, but it's not to end it or diminish it. It's like, okay, if it's took, took a dip here, how can we improve it? What can we do? What can, is there events? Well, how can we share this constantly? Like I said, so what is in it for long term? Not to bring you in and then get rid of you. It's a, it's a, it's a family. It's a long-term thing, just like the trail. Definitely long-term. And then, and then Tony, same thing. How does a athlete know that they're representing Stanley or any of the brands properly so that it gets communicated through all the different channels so that um, when a renewal decision is made, then they say, Hey, you know what? This guy did a great job for us. Let's renew. What, what can, what can the athletes do versus what the brand is doing to monitor I, I the think performance? When the athlete becomes the brand, uh, whether it's DuPont and Jeff Gordon, or Valerine and Mark Martin, or Mac Tools and Doug Coletta, I can even say Matt Kenseth and DeWalt. You know, everybody's going to always think of Matt Kenseth and DeWalt, Tony Stewart and Home Depot. Um, 
I think when they become part of that brand and when, when they are representing you, whether it's on TV at an appearance, um, when when a customer says, hey, I'm a huge, you know, Christopher Bell fan and, you know, we track sales with that customer over the last year. And when they attended this race, their sales went up 20 percent. Um, you know, it's those things that you watch, but I really think that you want to pick athletes that become the brand. Um, you know, when people see a certain person, they think of your brand, Ron Caps, when they see your brand, they think of that certain person, right? Right, Ron Caps, Snap Auto Parts, now also Toyota. That's the first thing I think of when I see Ron. Yeah. So I like that. Then Tony, what what kind of um the, the metrics that you use? Do you have key performance indicators that you look at? I know you told me once, and tell me if this is still accurate. Um, I know the book is a little outdated now, but are you still looking for a three to one return on your investment yeah. when you invest yeah. in athletes? And and, and yeah, I, we all know it's really hard to calculate an ROI, but it's really really hard to calculate calculate ROI. But you know, your we're, we're, our goal is to see a three to one return on anything that we do. Um, and, and what we do is, is, uh, we do quarterly reports and we call them dashboards. And, you know, back when, when I first took over many, many years ago, uh, it was all about exposure, 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 exposure. And these exposure numbers were, was huge. That's what uh, I used to sell was exposure 20 years ago. Yeah. Times so have changed. What 100% media value, whatever it was. And these numbers was just massive. And, you know, when you presented those, you know, you was always you would always hear, you know, I don't know that I believe those numbers, but I know that it's important to the company. So now when we report these numbers, we want to make sure that it's exposure. We want to make impressions. We want to make sure it's a social engagement. We we want to, you know, make we want to track storytelling and what content we built with that. We want to also B2B, big, big factor of it. How, how, how many fasteners are we selling to Toyota or to Ford or to, to, to Chevy or whoever that is? Uh, and, and, and we we uh, we have, you know, with all the teams that we out, have out there, we do have drivers with other OEMs like Ford and, and Chevy. But um, but not only that, but, you know, when we, you know, show cars, you know, when show cars make appearances, you know, we sell tools at those appearances. So those are all metrics that 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 we track on a quarterly basis. And at the end of the day, it all comes down to that three to one return on that investment or whatever that may be. So I realize this is going to be a hard question to answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. And I'll ask first Tony, then Andre. Um, if an athlete on the call or watching the recording in the future wants to approach your brand and be considered for sponsorship, what are the metrics that you're going to look for? Or what are you going to look for in that person? Or how should the person first start the relationship? What, what's the first step to getting your attention to be considered for sponsorship? You have a lot well, of, I think you already have 20 really top teams in racing already, Tony. Do you need more? Um, you know, I don't want to ever say we don't need more, um, but you can only, you know, the other guys on the, that, that was before us, you, you only got so much money. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, you want to take that money and you, you know, my, my old boss, I, you know, take a nickel and make it look like a dollar. You know, you want to take however much you got and, 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 and make it go as far as you possibly can. So, and I and I talk to a ton of athletes each week, but the last you know the the, the last guy from from Monster I forget what his name was. Um, Walter Phil, from Amazon, Phil. Wing from Wahoos, and Phil from Monster. Yeah, yeah. So so Phil, you know, he really said it. You know, I get reached out by a lot of uh, athletes or, or or teams or drivers, and they just want to ask a question. And hey, can I ha- can can you go to can you go to have coffee with me. Can you go to lunch with me? They're not really looking for a sponsorship, but they're looking to see how I could possibly help them improve their brand so they can attract sponsorship. Um, and so I, I think that's the biggest thing is be yourself. Um, you know, what, the guys that just hammer me with uh, proposals or, 
you know, I, I, it, it's it's tough. And I want to look at those proposals, but everybody is so passionate about what they do. Um, and we really got to figure out, okay, how can you help us sell more tools? And and, and that's the key is, is uh, visibility is great. Impression is great. Content's great. But how can we sell more? How do we move them from awareness to consideration, consideration to, to person? person. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. You said to me when we were talking, this is, uh, like I said, a decade ago when I was taking notes for the book that, uh, Everybody who approaches us is number one. Mm -hmm. Every proposal I get, that's the champion. You know, you, everybody's always going to win the next race. But mm -hmm. who's that person that's actually going to bring your customers and, and get them to do more? So what you said is you actually try to take the back part of a car in some of the series and you give that to your customers. You pass that mm -hmm. through. That's a pass-through right. So that your customers, perhaps, and, and when I say your customers, I don't mean a retail customer. I mean a wholesale customer who's buying pallets and pallets to resell. So your retail store customer is buying more from you. You give them that visibility on the car, and then you take them down and give them an experience in the pits and an experience behind the mm -hmm. scenes, let's say at NASCAR or NHRA, and it makes mm -hmm. them feel like they're part of it. And then they come back, and the next day they place a much bigger order. Does that still hold? Well, well, we hope they do, but we, we call that the EUL program, end user logo program. And it and it's it, it's a, a a customer program where it might be Andreas construction and you know they're a big customer of ours and they're in the Talladega area. And hey, listen, you know, we put their logo on the car, they run it for the weekend. We do give them behind the scenes tour, meet and greets, things like that. And that you know, we hope they buy more, but it also builds a relationship. We go. keep talking about relationships with that customer that they're never going to forget. And so the next time they need to buy tools, they think of Stanley Black and Decker. It could be Mac tools too. You know, those distributors out on the street that's in those Mac tool trucks, those are franchisees. They're our customer too. So if we take and we put their name on the side of a Doug Coletta's car, and bring them to the track, show them a good time. They're gonna, you know, they're gonna represent our, they are Mac tools to that technician when they walk into that garage. And it's all about building that relationship um, with whatever, whether it's a distributor, whether it's a, a, a retail, a national account or whatever that may be, it's about building relationships. Yeah, amen. And, uh, and it goes back to what Wing Lamb was saying from Wahoo's about, being part of the experience and part of the fun and making the experience fun so that they remember the brand. Yep. When they're down in pit row, getting this once in a lifetime experience, meeting athletes or you know famous racers they've never met before, and they're surrounded by the brands, they remember the brand as well as they remember that experience. Yeah, it could be you know meeting a baseball player, you know right. one of our our athletes. It could be meeting a soccer player, or I hate to say soccer football player. It depends on who I'm talking to, uh, but a, a football player. Um, you know, those things are priceless when a, uh, for, for, you know, when a customer, you can build an experience for them that they'll never forget bucket list experiences. I always like to say, come and expect nothing. And when you walk away, you know, we're going to exceed your expectation, um, and, and create a, a bucket list experience. Yeah, and Toyota does that too, with the different events, the Toyota oh, yeah. sponsors. You create those experiences, right? Yeah, we, uh, yeah, Todd is, we're, we're, we're spread quite, in quite a bit of ways around. Right. So let me, ask you, let me ask you the same question. If an athlete, let's say someone on the call here wants to be considered by Toyota, what are some recommendations that you would give to them just to get noticed? And, and you obviously said, start with the relationship. Let's form a relationship first. Yeah. And, and then Tony touched on a lot of those points. It, it is, it, you know, we get obviously proposals and, and approached all the time, you know, daily, you know, monthly. Um, one of the, one of the things that I, I put out before was one is patience because mm -hmm. yes. it's going to take some time. We're, we're, we're kind of a big piece of pie. <laughs> so, you know, in, 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 but we don't want to discourage. And then we all, well, one of the first things I, I'll say me personally, I'm the four, are you going to approach me and Toyota with your hand out? Or are you going to approach me to take my hand? Hmm. 
-hmm. And that, that's, that's one of the things that puts my antennas up. Hey, this particular person, they really want to help us sell some cards or they think they have another way or another venue or another approach that could get, that could help through our partnership, not sponsorship, but our partnership. Mm -hmm. Because you have to keep that in mind when you're approaching us. We want long term. We don't want you just, we're not, we don't want to do a pass through. We want to keep, keep the partnership as long as we can. So we, you know, yeah, there's the formal things, the proposals and the emails and the, and the, and those types of things, but try to keep yourself positioned in front of us, keep in touch, you know, some type of way, but start the relationship piece first. And then if the sponsorship comes about, okay, it was supposed to be, but you have to be realistic. Mm -hmm. And I use the example, I used this before on your last, on your last podcast. There's a, there's a gentleman that uh, came at us for about uh, seven or eight years, about four times. And a lot of people want to call me, I've heard of him, his name is Steve Torrance. Yep. And that, Steve was very patient. He came and we, we, you know, we finally partnered up and found a way to make it work as, as partners. And it's been a success. He's, he's a world champion. But it didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen over a season. It didn't happen over a year. Right. You know, it, it was just kind of making himself a present, showing how he can be an ambassador, showing how he can be a partner with us, those types of things. So it, it's, it's patience. Um, what, what you can show us that we may not already know about what you can do to help us sell Toyotas, um, how you can be an ambassador, you know, for us. And then, you know, the, the formal things, of course, come come later, but we don't look at that first. Because like like Tony, like I said, we get we get approached constantly and we don't want to just say, heck no. But it's like, OK, well, show me something, you know, show me, show me what you got. Show me where you're coming from, you know, so. And then yeah, and I'm there, just to tag on. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I'm sorry. Just to tag on to that, I was going to say, um, you know. The more people you meet, the more opportunity doors open. Um, I think about Carl Edwards back in the day, passing out business cards at every race, <laughs> at every race. He just passed out business cards. Um, and everybody's like, who is this crazy guy passing out business cards? Well, he's, he's, he's one of the top 75 NASCAR drivers. Now he's, he's, uh, he's in the hall of fame, you know, it's, it's, and he started by just approaching as many people as he can making contacts mm -hmm. and uh, building relationships mm -hmm. and sponsorships came. Yeah, that's that patience factor. I, I completely agree. You know, it, it's not going to happen you know, even with a guy like that overnight. I mean, you know, it, 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 it takes some time. And if, if we're worth it to you, then you'll, you'll take that time. And I don't mean that to sound, you know, bitter or arrogant, but it's, that's, you know, kind of the cadence of it. Now, now let's go real quick on a side tangent is, do you use agents or agencies? Should people also try to get to know your agency or do you, does everything go in-house? Let's start it, with Toyota. Um, it, it's kind of both. I mean, our agency, yeah, we have we have partners that 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 get things on our behalf and those types of things. But it, whether you're coming down that hallway or coming directly, it's going to come through here. Okay. So it's we don't necessarily ask them to vet for us. I mean, maybe, you know, in a, in a small way, but it's going to come through the big house okay? because we have to vet it through, you know, our, you know, uh, decision makers. So it's not going to be uh, uh, end around, if, it, if you say, you know, uh, it's not going to be a easy way. It's going to come through here. It's so. funny how you manage it because it's such a big company, but I, my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, is all your livery goes through one person also, right? So the brand image is always perfect. There, <laughs> <laughs> for the for the, yes, for the most part, there's there's a young lady. Uh, she's a very dear friend of mine. Her name is Mandy Underfoot, and uh, she is our brand sheriff, if you okay. will. So if you see a vehicle on any racetrack of any uh, 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 league or division, that branding on there has gone through her to approve. Okay, nice. And and Tony knows her well. I mean, she's our sheriff, and then she approves it. Then our you know it goes through our chain of command. But if she hasn't seen it, it won't even go through our chain of command. Cool. And then, Tony, real quick, how about you, agents and agencies? Then we have a question. You know, I love agencies, but not to negotiate contracts for us. Um, we need agencies to help us 
you know, create other things, promotions, sweet stakes, things like that, uh, entertaining customers and things like that. But, you know, we pretty much get all the proposals in. We, we look at them. We see which ones kind of fit and are going to deliver um, on our KPIs. Um, and then, um, then we take it up through our management team and present it. Um, you know, and this is why we think we should, uh, you know, sponsor this team or athlete or driver or, or venue, put it that way. So since you said proposal, like I got to go there, you get a new proposal on your desk. You haven't seen it before. What's the first thing that catches your eye and what turns you off that makes you just not want to look any further? I asked this of a lot of people uh, yes. and you're first time on a call. So you didn't, you didn't get this one yet, but what catches your yeah. eye and what turns you off? Yeah, and I guess, um, you know, I, I, I keep watching some of the comments over here and it's talk, you know, uh, the, the person's asking, you know, how do I meet these people, you know, uh, you know, if I just don't go to events? I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, when I see a proposal, if it's put together and it's, and it's showing me, you know, ideas how to sell more product, if it's, if it's giving me, what kind of content they're going to build for us and how they can tell stories for us, then that's probably where I pick it up and, 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 and want to learn more about that person. But, you know, whether it's at a trade show, whether it's at um, a convention, whether it's at a sporting event, that's where you meet these people. Um, and it could be, you know, I get, man, I hate to say it, but, I've got about 500 LinkedIn invites out there, you know, and I'm probably going to get more after this thing um, that's waiting for me to accept. I don't want to just accept somebody because they're going to pitch me a sponsorship. Right. Mm -hmm. I want them to come up to me um, and hand me their business card. Hey, would love to have breakfast with you or a coffee or just a phone call, just to chat so I can tell you about, you know, our program. Um, and, and so, um, I, I guess that if, if if they've got all of those things that I just mentioned, you know, in their proposal, that's probably going to jump right out at me. Right on. Cool. Thanks, Hopefully that Jeremy. answers the questions out there. Oh, no, that's good. And then, and then George, George said, had a question. Oh, that answered the question. Okay, right on. Um, are there any other questions in the chat room? And if not, then what we'll do is we'll go last last uh, words of advice, tips and tricks, just what recommendations do you have? Stuff that I wanted to talk about but forgot, didn't cover. Uh, let's start with Andre and then go to Tony. I, I, I would, well, just to sort of uh, piggyback what Tony said, he had a lot of great points, you know, for me, and this segues into what you were just asking, Alex. For me, what jumps out is, okay, if I'm looking at your proposal, how does how am I convinced that this didn't go to, 25 other companies mm -hmm. is this if i look through it yeah. are you looking for something from me or are you looking for a way to meet me to meet you toilet go. you know it should be you know if i we've gotten books you know 30 page proposals we've gotten just an email what are you trying to do because it, it it'll become pretty evident pretty quickly of what you're trying to do if you're just looking for a handout if you're just looking for money or you say, hey, Tony, you know what? I got this idea, kind of to Tony's point. I want to run it by you. You know, when can we meet? What grace will you be? Uh, you know, when's a good time to set up a call? How quickly can you put you in front of us other than what's on paper? So it's, you know, you get so many of them, you start to learn to kind of kind of weed out. And you have the LinkedIn piece. Yeah, that's definitely a piece of it. It's you got to think like chess. You have to think three, four steps further. Excellent. You know, and in some ways you have to be confident enough to assume the clothes. What if Toyota does pick me? What am I prepared to tell them? What am I prepared to show them? You know, well, you never know. So you just have to kind of think that. Yeah, that's perfect. I totally agree with that. Real quick, Tony, last words of advice, then we do have a question. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just always being in front of, uh, of, of the person that you, that you want to work with. Uh, I, I keep thinking about this young lady. Uh, her daughter's racing now, but um, I'm not going to mention any names, but every time I turned around, she was standing in front of me at an event. Hey, Tony, how you doing? Good to see you. I haven't seen you. You know, blah, 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 blah. She was always in front of me. Yeah. Um, we've never sponsored her. But we've got a great relationship. But who knows when we're going to look for a, an athlete that her that might fit her 
and I know who to call. Yeah, now she's uh, familiar. She's no longer yeah, a stranger. She's, she's familiar. And yeah. so, but I, I mean, my only word of advice is manage your brand. Remember, everybody's always going to be looking at you, watching you, listening at you. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at your social platforms. I'm going to see how you represent yourself. Um, I'm going to, you know, when we talk on the phone, I, I, I'm going to know by, you know, how you answer your questions. You know, if you're an athlete or a, a, a driver or whatever that that we want to that we want to partner with. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Actually, very logical. We'll do the quick question and then um, we'll head over to the tech section. Sounds good. So uh, the question came through from uh, Jeff Walls. He said, uh, if we have regional uh, relationships with a brand, how do we transition that into a national one? That's a good uh, one. We are a racing series. Uh, let's see here. That races from Alabama to Ohio to the Carolinas. So let's, uh, let's have Andre go first and then we'll have Tony close it out. I think that's excellent because a lot of sponsorships start regional and go national. That's excellent. Toyota yeah, is a good for, example because the dealerships. Go ahead, Andre. No, yeah, but but well, the, the the answer was kind of in the question. I mean, sometimes it starts regional, it goes national. Sometimes we'll get a proposal and say, "Hey, this would be good for the New York region," oh, or nice. we can look at you know dealer groups and things like that. So we're not going to just turn it down all the time. We'll recommend it to our officers that make their own decisions. But to answer the question, it, it's it's time and consideration, just like it, like if someone came in you know, cold calls. We have to look at it and see what the partnership could be if it will pencil on a national level. So we have to look at it as if it's brand new, you know, as if it just, you know, just came in. Obviously, yes, we're going to talk to our office and see what, if they've heard of the person or the group, what, what they think, those types of things. And then we just have to, we have to vet it over from, from ground zero. We have to kind of start all over and then get our teams to look into the, the media pieces and the social media and the, the, the branding potential and all of those things all over again, because it's, it's obviously we have 12 regions. So it's 12 times bigger, you know, going from one region to, to the country. You see what I mean? So that's, that's probably the simplest answer. Excellent. I like that. Sometimes going national to the region as opposed to vice versa. Excellent. Yeah, oh, we've, oh yeah. We've done that totally. Oh yeah. Excellent. Well, yeah. listen, thank you both of you, Tony and Andre. That was awesome. Tony, first time on. Thank you. I hope you come back. Andre, you're always welcome. This was, I hope you guys can stay fun. on for the, the chat at the very end. In 30 minutes, we're going to just have an open chat where anybody can okay. ask any questions they want, you know, just free for all. 